Hey guys, welcome to the third video in our Amazon Sell Essential series. Today I'm gonna to be breaking down how to create a shipping plan so you can get your goods into Amazon and onto the market. Let's do it. Now, if you haven't already set up a Seller Central account or created your first listing, I'd recommend going back to episodes one and two of this series to go through this process first. Once you've had your product manufactured and you're ready to send it into Amazon, then you'll need this next step. Let's back up and talk a bit about the shipping process as a whole. So you're working with your supplier, you've got an order there of let's say 500 or 1000 units, your options for shipping are either to get your supplier to organize this or find your own freight forwarder. I generally recommend finding your own freight forwarder as this gives you more control over the process and up to date information. If you go through your supplier, they'll still go to a freight forwarder of their choice and then they become sort of the middleman having to relay messages back and forth. It's much easier to work with your own freight forwarder. But what does the process look like? Well, Flexport is a freight forwarder that I've used personally, as well as many other sellers on the team. There are others, but we know Flexport and it's a popular option for a lot of sellers. So we use them as an example. I'll show you the process of using their dashboard and then what you need to do in Seller Central to make this shipment happen. All right, we're inside the Flexport dashboard now. First, click request quote, give the shipment a name, now you need to decide between using Ocean or Air Freight, or you can get quotes for both. The simplest explanation is that Ocean Freight is much cheaper but takes longer, often four to five weeks, whereas Air Freight is much quicker, one to two weeks, but is more expensive. So you need to decide which is more important. If you're running out of stock quickly, you might send it by air. Or if you know you have enough stock to last the next at least five to six weeks, you can probably save some money and go buy Ocean. Shipment type. You've got less than container load and full container load. Which do you choose? Well, we've got a great rule of thumb from Michael Gallardo from Flexport, who we had an in-depth discussion with regarding shipping in the above episode of the Million Dollar Case Study. If you're interested in checking it out, I highly recommend watching it. But essentially, it depends on the volume of your shipment, measured in cubic meters or CBM. And Michael's rule of thumb is, if your shipment is under 18 CBM, then go with less than container load. And if it's more, then go with full container load. Here's a guide to give you an idea of the cubic meter volumes of these different container sizes. Your supplier should give you the INCO terms, whether it's FOB, meaning your supplier is responsible for sending your product to the port, or EXW terms where they won't transport it at all and your freight forwarder needs to pick it up from the factory. Add in your supplier's address for pickup and then the expected date it will be ready. If you don't know for certain, then just estimate as closely as you can. Here you need to add in the final destination address. This is the warehouse address you receive from Amazon. We need to create the shipment there first in order to finish this quotation. So let's do that now. As mentioned before, go to inventory, manage inventory, and then send replenish inventory. Create a new shipping plan. For the ship from address, put in your supplier's address if you're using them to organize shipping, or if you're using a freight forwarder, then you might put their address in here. The reason being that within the US, Amazon has deep discounts with partnered freight companies. So the cheapest option for you is to have your freight forwarder get your shipment to the US where they'll hold it at one of their locations and then use Amazon's partners to ship it that last mile into their warehouses. We'll come to the section where you can book this shortly. Now, case packed refers to the same one product being packed and then individual is where you've got different products all in one box. You'll mostly be selecting case packed. Now on this page, you now need to enter the quantity of units that you're sending. It's important for the total number to be correct here as you can only adjust this by five units later on, but the units per case and the number of cases doesn't have to be exact. For instance, if you have boxes of 50 units and then one other box of only 20, it doesn't really allow you to enter that in here. So just make sure the math adds up to the total amount and you can change the box configurations later. Now, 
Some products will require more information, but otherwise, click continue. You choose who's going to apply the FNSKU barcodes to your product, either Amazon or the merchant, meaning you or your supplier. Amazon charges 20 cents per unit to do this, so I'd recommend getting your supplier to do this, and quite often they'll do this for free. Just click down here to print out the labels and send them to your supplier. The other option to keep in mind is to get your FN SKU printed onto your packaging, meaning no one ever has to apply stickers to the boxes afterwards, so that's worth looking into. If you're doing one of these options, it's a good idea to check that the barcode scans before the shipment gets sent out, just in case the sticker or printer design is too big or too small or comes out blurry. The chances of this happening are usually pretty low from my experience, but it's not a bad idea to check. A simple way to do this would be to get your supplier to take photos for you of one of the boxes and then taking your smartphone, open up the Amazon app, and you can actually scan FNSQ barcodes to bring up the product's listing. If your phone can pick up the barcode from just a photo of the packaging, then it should definitely be fine. So we don't need Amazon to apply this for us, and we select Merchant. Remember, you can get your FNSKU labels here, but you can also download them later on if you need from your Manage Inventory screen and by clicking Print Item Labels. Click Continue. You can name your shipment over here, then confirm all these details are correct and approve shipment. Come over to Work on Shipment. Now you'll see the Amazon warehouse that it will be shipped to and importantly, the address, which you can now copy and send to your freight forwarder. As you'll remember, we need this for Flexport, but let's just copy it for now and then we'll head back to Flexport once we're finished here. Select your shipping service. As I mentioned earlier, you'll wanna use Amazon's partnered carrier to ship your product the final distance. Another situation that you would do this is if you have your freight forwarder send your shipment to your house first. This is what some sellers do in order to inspect the products first and then get Amazon to pick it up for that final distance. Or if you weren't using a freight forwarder and your supplier was organizing shipping, then you would select using your own carrier and they'll just deliver right to Amazon's doorstep. Now, select whether everything is in one box or multiple. Usually it'd be multiple. Now you can set up the box configurations. This is where you can customize the number of units per box and the number of boxes, if they're not all the same. Hit confirm. As we've selected an Amazon carrier, click calculate to view the approximate charge. Check the box and agree to accept the charges. Now print box labels, which will give you a PDF with shipping labels that you can send to your supplier who can apply these for you. Or if your shipment is coming to your house, you can apply them then just as long as they're attached to the boxes before they're sent into Amazon. This is important as this is how Amazon identifies these boxes as yours. Also make sure the labels are on the correct box. In this example, I have eight boxes of 60 units and one box with only 20. This one box needs to have the corresponding label with 20 units on it. However, the others are okay because they're all the same. So it can be any labels. Now click complete shipment and you'll be done. Now back to Flexport. We can enter in the warehouse address given to us by Amazon. Side note, if you're given multiple warehouse locations, then put the main one that's receiving the most stock here and then add the other addresses and details in the special instructions section down the bottom. Now, for your cargo information, if you know the dimensions and weight by box, that's the best way, or at the very least, try and find out the total shipment weight and volume. However, your supplier should be able to give you this information on a per box basis. Now fill out the final questions and then request quote. You'll start to receive quotes very soon. And once you find one you're happy with, you can book it in and pay through Flexport. So there you go. You've now got your shipment set up correctly within Seller Central and Flexport and are one step closer to getting your product gracing Amazon's shelves. But in order to sell bucket loads of product and fulfill all your hopes and dreams, you'll need to learn how to effectively market your product. An important part of doing that is using Amazon's sponsored ads platform and understanding the advertising menu and everything inside of it, inside of Seller Central. 
But no fear, this is exactly what we cover in the next video of this series, so make sure to check that one out. Now over to you. Which freight forwarder do you use or have you used in the past? Comment below as I'd love to hear everyone's experience with different freight forwarders. I hope you found a lot of value in today's video. Please give me a thumbs up below if you did and subscribe to get more videos like this. All the very best with your shipping and I'll see you in the next video.